hear me. So, hello everyone. Welcome to this uh, session about astrology. We are going to speak about Gemini. Who is uh, Gemini in this room? Anyone? Oh, yeah, a few. Okay. Usually there's a, a twelfth of the room, basically, who's Gemini, right? Uh, I'm not Gemini, but <laughs> yet I'm going to speak about Geminis. Um, so we're going to speak about Google's latest uh, large language model. It's actually a multimodal language uh, model. We'll, we'll see uh, what it means. Uh, but obviously, uh, as I'm a Java developer, I'm a Java champion. Uh, I was the creator of the Apache GUI programming language. So I've done basically all my career using Java as a programming language. So I want to show uh, Java how, and how to use Gemini from Java. And uh, when I looked at the, uh, the schedule of the conference, I also noticed that Longchain4j is mentioned in uh, several talks. And again, you'll see some Longchain4j today in this uh, session where I will drive Gemini with Longchain4j. All right, so feel free to follow me on Twitter, Blue Sky, Mastodon, elsewhere. If you have questions after the talk, don't hesitate to reach out uh, to me via the, those social media links. And uh, yeah, my name is Guillaume Laforge, and I'm a developer advocate for Google Cloud. So the big, big innovation that came roughly in uh, 2016, 2017, that was a paper, a uh, research paper from Google, actually, called the Transformers. Uh, well, the, it's not the, the name of the paper, but the uh, new neural network architecture that was devised by this paper uh, is called Transformers. Um, what's interesting with that, so la large language model existed before, but were not as large. But with this new architecture of neural networks, it was now possible, it was then possible to start training much, much, much bigger neural networks with even more data and be able to also do inference more quickly because things were more parallel, parallelizable, a little, something like this, you know, more parallel. And um, this is basically what led to this revolution of uh, ChatGPT, which popularized uh, those large language models, of course. Uh, but all the, you know, Lama 3 and all the models are based on this. Uh, innovation. That was actually for, from Google in the first place. But there are many other innovations. Of course, it's not just Google who invented that, that field. But here, this is a slide about some of the innovations that came from Google Deep, DeepMind and Google Research, which are now merged uh, into one. And by the way, the name, uh, Gemini, uh, of the, the name of the model, comes from the fact that we had internally two uh, research groups, Google Research and Google DeepMind, that merged together, but they were kind of like Geminis within uh, Google as they were working in parallel on the topic of large language models. So that's where the name came from. So we're going to speak about Gemini, and uh, it's available in three sizes. So there's Ultra, the biggest one, there's Pro, the one you will likely use the most, a nano, nano, it's a small one that can uh, fit in a mobile phone, in a smartphone, and it's actually bundled uh, in like the latest, uh, well, I'm not sure in the, I've got a Pixel 7 Pro, but I think it's only in the Pixel 8 uh, that it's um, available, and also on the latest Samsung S24. And uh, last week there was Google I.O., and uh, we also mentioned that nano, will be part of Chrome. So you will be able to have a local large language model built into your browser, uh, which is interesting because um, you, you may have less, uh, 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 let's say, a lower latency, or for privacy reasons, if you want um, the treatment of your data to stay local on your machine, etc. Uh, that's also a big advantage. So I say three sizes, but there's also, uh, I think maybe it's, uh, no, it's uh, in a couple of slides. Um, there's also another model that we'll use in the demos later on, which is Flash. So it's not really a size, but it's more uh, a different flavor uh, of the model. Uh, Gemini is really good at uh, multimodality, so you can give it not just text, but also images, uh, videos, text files like PDF files, uh, it can look at the audio tracks in videos, etc. So all the usual uh, multimedia kind of formats are supported. It's great at advanced reasoning, like math problems, etc. 
and it's pretty good at coding. So if you want to use it for um, code generation, etc., it's it's pretty good at that. And I think you know that's the like this slide. I'm going to show the the previous one after. Uh, we're actually using Gemini, the name of the model, uh, as a label for lots of things. So I was saying that Gemini is good at. Uh, code generation, code understanding, etc. But we also have a product called Gemini Code Assist, which is a bit similar to uh, GitHub Copilot, etc. That you can use in your IDE. So it's called Gemini as well. So it's there's Gemini for uh, BigQuery, for example, if you want to do a data lake analysis, etc. If you want big data, etc. So we name pretty much everything Gemini something. And uh, I was saying that. Uh, yeah, so this one. Uh, there's an extra flavor of Gemini that was announced last week at Google I.O. That's Gemini 1.5 Flash. So Flash, it's, in terms of capabilities, it's pretty similar to Gemini 1.5 Pro, but it's much, more, uh, it's much faster, more efficient. And for example, the first tokens are streamed within less than a second. So it's, uh, if you want to see you know, the live completion and uh, the model writing the, uh, its answer, it's, uh, it's very, in terms of latency, it's really, it's really neat. Uh, it's uh, uh, both, both 1.5 Pro and 1.5 Flash support a long context window of one million tokens. That's the biggest you can find on, on the market, basically. And there's a wait list that you can join if you want to try two million tokens. And with, uh, I think uh, it's in this one, uh, where what can you do with actually one million token, for example? One million token, that's one hour of video, that's 11 hours of audio, 30K uh, lines, 30,000 lines of code, so you can often feed your own pro your, your whole project, and it can reason about the whole project. Uh, Seven uh, thousand words, so you can feed pretty much all of Harry Potter, for example, in the context window, and uh, it's going to be able to tell you something about Harry Potter, I guess. So two million tokens will be, uh, you know, twice as big. So maybe we can uh, have a quick look at uh, Gemini. Uh, let me show you Gemini Advanced and, and Gemini, the, Gemini the web app, since everything is named Gemini something. So Gemini, that's, um, uh, maybe I should ask the question, who's used ChatGPT in the audience? Yeah. And who's tried Gemini? Usually there's like a quarter of the same crowd. Okay. Uh, so this is Gemini, which is the, the web app that you can use uh, to interact with uh, Gemini. So for example, um, so I'm using the advanced version, that's the, the paying version, but there's also the normal Gemini, not, not advanced one. Um, maybe, uh, what can I ask? Um, I think I had some examples before. Oh yeah, so for example, uh, what was announced at Google I.O. 2024 last week? Whoops, last week. So let's see what it says. Uh, what's interesting, although you know large language models are trained up to a certain date, but it's uh, the Gemini web app is actually um, wired or connected to Google Search, so it's it knows about the the latest things that happened. So yeah, it's talking about Gemini, the workspace updates, um, and there are, there are some some links. Uh, it doesn't mention F Gemini Flash, for example. So I'm going to ask, um, so what are the differences between, so it doesn't always generate, the, of course, the same uh, answer that between Gemini 1.5 Pro and Gemini 1.5 Flash. Show the answer in a table. The answer in a table. I like doing, doing this because usually uh, it shows a nice, it, it actually generates a markdown. Oh, it's not a table. I want a table. You know, AI is uh, kind of independent, doesn't always obey uh, its master, right? Uh, show the, I'm going to, maybe I should add, please, I don't know. Show the data inside a table with pros and cons. Please! Let's see. <laughs> 
because I, I was doing that uh, th this morning and it was always generating the table, but you know. Let's see, Do, will I have a table? No, no table. Oh my God. Um, maybe I have it in the, in the past. Yeah, this one. So usually it generates something like this, so I don't know why. It <laughs> but, you know, maybe it's shy, you know, it's on the stage and it doesn't want to show what it's uh, able to do, so I don't know. And there are some cool things like the, you know, the fact that you can export to sheets if you want to then analyze the data or do something with the data. But yeah, that's basically it. So uh, the, in terms of capabilities, they are equivalent, but um, um, Flash is, is uh, faster, basically, etc. And, and, and also less expensive. Um, with Gemini, you can also, oh yeah, something that was announced at um, Google AU last week, that's Gems. So that's your personal assistant. You can create your own, and uh, you can use one of these uh, which are available. So for example, so may maybe you've heard about GPTs in the OpenAI world. That's the equivalent of the GPTs, like custom uh, chats. So maybe um, can we cook some uh, special Belgian dessert? Belgina. <laughs> Belgian dessert, maybe? What, what is it going to suggest? Okay, uh, what kind of ah, a dessert? Uh, I'm thinking of Belgian waffles, you know, so flour, eggs, etc. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, oh, some interesting ones. I don't even know what waffles are made of. So, are are, the, are, the, are these really Belgian recipes? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So let's go with the. Let's go with the. Oh, I have to taste that. What, what's nice, you know, is that it interleaves. A wonderful choice. How comfortable. Yeah, I'm a super cook. Um, it interleaves pictures, etc. So it gives you a, a rich, um, a rich uh, output. So it should show some pictures, etc. Techniques, the steps, etc. So it works great. And where's there? Yeah. Oh. And usually there, there are also links. I don't see links this time. Oh yeah, there are links for the techniques. Uh, another useful thing is this. Well, maybe it'll be less meaningful for that example, but there's a Google search little button there that you can use to figure out, so let's see, uh, how is it factual and whether you can find relevant information that correspond to the text that was generated. Do you find that information in Google search results? So for example, yeah, let all the warm rice, blah, 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 there's a link to some page that gives some further information. And usually what's orange is stuff for which you didn't really find any uh, meaningful and relevant information. So there's this. I um, think I'm going to show you something else um, because I want to tell you about the multimodal aspects because here I just entered some text. Um, so it's great. So multimodal, again, that's text, but images, pictures, videos, etc. So let me show you a few things. So what was my... Yeah, so I'll, I'll start with the video. Um, so instead of using Gemini, the, the web application, I'm going to use Google AI Studio, which is a front end with which you can play uh, with uh, the, the different models that are available, 1.0, 1.5 Pro, etc. So there's uh, an example that I like, which is you can feed like a big, oh yeah, and I, I want to show you uh, this link first. Um, so you know about the um, Apollo 11 mission, the, the transcripts of the, the whole mission are available online. So there's like a PDF version, an HTML version of all the exchanges between, you know, Neil Armstrong, Houston, etc. So it's a pretty, pretty big document. And for example, I can upload the whole transcript. Uh, where is it? Uh, yeah, let's do with the HTML. So it's 1.2 megabytes. I'll use let's say 1.5 Pro, and I'd like to know uh, what is the time code when Neil Armstrong says his famous quote. 
So I really want to, because uh, if I show you the, uh, the transcript, so each time there's something that is said, you can see like the, the time code. So day, f that's the fourth day of the mission, 12 hours, 48 minutes, etc. And if I search for small step, okay. So the time code is this, that's one small step for a man. So let's see uh, if in usually it takes about like 40 or 50 seconds uh, to, um, to parse the document and search through, through the document. But what is interesting, so you, you probably all have heard about, oh, it didn't work. Um, so usually it does work. Uh, I didn't say please, right? Give the time code of Neil Armstrong. Famous quote. Please. Let's try again. Uh, because usually it replies with the um, the actual time code, and and the the thing I wanted to say was that um, when you use RAG ritual augmented generation, um, there are things you can do with a small context window and with a ritual augmented generation approach. Uh, but here, notice that I'm asking for like the famous quote from Neil Armstrong. But if you look at what's there, you don't really know that it's Neil Armstrong or that, that was his quote, okay? So that's also part of the knowledge of the model, what was the quote. But if you were using a classical RAG approach, um, you wouldn't really be able to, uh, or you'd have to do an advanced RAG implementation to do a multi-step thing so that, okay, first, what is the famous quote? So who is Neil Armstrong? Uh, what is his most famous quote? Let's search for the most famous quote. So it's not trivial. Whereas, normally, you are absolutely right, and this time it says, so 4, 13, 24, 48, uh, let's say, yeah, 13, 24, 48. So it really found the exact point, the time code in the transcript where uh, this, this was uh, said. So be sure to say please, right? Uh, I'm going to show you another one, uh, which is with videos. Um, so there are some sample videos because it's usually big. So let's say I'm going to use this video. So it's a video about the American Museum of Natural History. So you can see in the, the main uh, image there was a, like a, a gem, a, a geode that was displayed. So maybe we can ask, um, are there some minerals or gems displayed in this video? If yes, what kind of gems or minerals are, are, are there? Please? Right? I don't know. I'm going to add please every time now. And notice that a 30-minute video is actually half a million token, basically. So that's, uh, that's big. And uh, how it really works, uh, it splits the video, it samples the video one frame per second. And it analyzes, uh, it, it computes basically all those frames and analyzes all those frames. So it's going to find uh, throughout the video where um, you know it recognizes some gems or, or minerals. So let's see if it works. So same thing, half a million tokens should take like 40 or 50 seconds to run. Um, because that's a lot of tokens, it takes a, a lot of time. Yes, there are. So there's a geode filled with amethyst crystals. Uh, in the video, okay? So that's interesting, you can really, um, um, you can even use the voice, so for example, instead of typing the query, I could have asked the question via voice and then pass the video, etc. So you can mix and match different kind of um, uh, media, media, media files, and also uh, for things like videos, you can also uh, listen to the, the soundtrack and not just look at the frames, etc., so that you can analyze both uh, images and uh, what, what is being said. Uh, all right, I think that's about it, uh, about what I wanted to show you there. So let's go back to the slides. So that was uh, one small step for a man, please, <laughs> a giant leap for mankind. So yeah, that was it. Yeah, I had another example with uh, like making a summary of a big video, or finding uh, key scenes in the video, etc. That that works really really nicely. And uh, I don't remember if I have the. There's a. I have a colleague who made a, 
uh, an article with lots of ideas of things you can do with a large context window, uh, because sometimes there are things, as I, as I said, uh, that are harder to do with RAG, etc. Oh, it's gone. Uh, okay. All right. Um, yeah, so I wanted also to mention uh, Gemma. Gemma, it's a, a family of models derived from the Gemini models, uh, but this one is an open model. So instead of having a model that you can use from, uh, well, the internet, basically, uh, in, from Google Cloud, etc., you can also run Gemma as a small model locally on your machine. And I have a demo for, for that later on. So we released two um, sizes, a 2 billion models and a 7 billion models. Uh, it shows really excellent results compared to the other small models that are available, open models that are available. Uh, it's, uh, there's a base and instruction tuned models, and you can run it on your laptop. And, that, and I'll show you that later on. And there was a, so when we, it was released, there was a performance benchmark uh, that was published, but uh, I think we should, you know, update it to uh, like Lama 3, etc. Uh, and uh, there's a small update to Gemma, and uh, we also announced that Google I.O. Gemma 2, which will be coming later on, because Gemma is uh, a text model, uh, yeah, text model, a language model, uh, but the next version of Gemma will also be multimodal, like the, the Gemini models. But it shows uh, great, great performance. And uh, so when should you use one or the other? So uh, if you want to have something that runs locally on your machine uh, for privacy, for um, latency reasons, uh, etc., maybe you can choose a small model. Uh, but then if you want to have something that's uh, multi-language supported, etc., bigger models obviously know more about uh, other languages. So if it's English only, well, I tried Gemma with French, for example, my... my um, uh, mother tongue. Uh, it works well, uh, but it's probably not as good as it is in, in English, for example. Uh, also, uh, context windows uh, are smaller in uh, Gemma and uh, bigger windows with uh, Gemini, etc. So you might have uh, to you know, weigh the cons and pros and cons and decide when you should use one or the other, or maybe a combination of both, uh, depending on, on your use case. All right, so uh, I have 24 minutes left to talk more about Java this, this time, because we, sh we, we saw what the model is capable of, uh, but uh, it's important to see, you know, for, well, who's a Java developer, by the way? Pretty much everybody, yeah, good. Um, I'm a Java developer. I wanted to do LLMs with Java. So it was important for me to uh, be able to uh, use my favorite language. And if you look at what's available um, outside, uh, you'll see lots of stuff in Python. So how to train a model, it's in Python. How to, uh, all the you know, SDKs, et cetera, are usually released in Python first. And then Java sometimes is, is an afterthought if there's a version of, uh, available in Java. So I really wanted to do everything with LLMs, but in Java. And there are actually two options. Well, actually, three options. Uh, option zero would be because there's a REST API. You can use the REST API with whichever framework library that you like using, and then call that REST API. But there's also an SDK, Java SDK, the Gemini SDK that you can use, or uh, long chain for j uh, By the way, the Gemini SDK, I'm contributing to the Gemini SDK myself. So there, there are some uh, like a new feature that was released recently, system, in, um, system instructions um, that's now uh, bundled in the latest version. I'm the one who contributed it. And there's also Longchain4j, uh, for which I also contribute. And just like a quarter of an hour before the talk, uh, there's a, a new PR coming from me with the updates for the latest uh, Gemini versions in Longchain4j, which should be released hopefully tomorrow. Uh, so yeah, there are uh, three approaches, REST, the Gemini SDK. So sometimes, well, usually the Gemini SDK has the latest features before Longchain4j because Longchain4j actually bundles the Gemini SDK. So um, there are things you can do with the Gemini SDK maybe that you can't yet do with uh, Longchain4j. But about Longchain4j, so uh, this is the Longchain uh, logo here plus a little Java 
cup of uh, coffee. But if you merge the two icons, you've got a much nicer logo, right? Longchain4j has a nicer logo than Longchain, which is it's inspired from Longchain, the Python uh, project. And uh, Longchain, Longchain4j are LLM orchestrators kind of frameworks. So they allow you to work with different language models, with the embedding models, with vector databases, in particular, where you want to implement retrieval augmented generation, things like document splitters to split documents in chunks and create vector embeddings. So there are lots of integrations uh, available within Longchain4j, for, especially for more advanced use cases. If you use the Gemini Java SDK, you'd have to code those kind of more advanced use case uh, in a more, let's say, verbose way, because there's uh, more work to do to emulate the, the, the more advanced scenarios. So I was interested in using Longchain4j with Gemini. So that's uh, the example I'm going to show you. So uh, the examples of code I'm going to show you are actually part of a workshop I'm also running. Well, not at this conference, but uh, that uh, I run elsewhere. And uh, I'll share with you the code of the, the workshop, because you'll be able to use and uh, go through the workshop yourself if you want. Uh, so I'm going to show basic stuff, so like question answering, doing chats, analyzing pictures, etc., and to uh, onto more advanced use cases like ritual augmented generation, but also have a look at function calling, which is interesting to extend what an NLM is able to do. And then I also have a little demo with uh, Gemma to run uh, Gemma locally on, on your own machine or servers, etc. Uh, right, so let's start. Uh, I have an ID somewhere. Okay, so I'll start with a very simple question, which is a, a an, an example we often see, uh, which is about like, what is, why is the sky blue? It's a question you, you often see. So how would you do that? I'm going to create a chat model, a chat language model. Uh, so that's a long chain 4 j uh, wrapper kind of uh, object that you can use to interact with LLMs. And here I'm using the Vertex AI Gemini chat model. I'm going to pass the project, so the Google Cloud project I'm using, the location, like the, the region in which I'm running, and I pass the name of the model uh, I want to use. So this is Gemini 1.5 Flash on the preview that was released last week during the Google I.O. conference. So if I run that, You'll see, so well, there's a bit of a uh, Gradle wrapper thing, so don't bother with that. So as you can see, the sky appears to be blue due to a phenomenon called Rayleigh scattering. But you saw that the, the answer came in you know, one big batch. But you can also do streaming. So I've got the same uh, version, but with streaming. So this is, instead of just doing uh, like this, model generate and that you print the response, you can do generate, but you pass a streaming response handler. And on next, that's the method that is called on each token or sentence that is generated by the model. And then if there's an error, I'm going to print uh, the, the stack trace. So let's do that. And you should see that it's spitting the, the response pieces by pieces. So if you want a chat experience, if you want to see low latency, for in terms of UI, that's nicer to have this streaming uh, approach going on because you see the, re the the answer being written down. So this is usually what's used in uh, you know Gemini, the web app, or ChatGPT, and, and so on. That's uh, friendlier, and you can read before the whole answer is generated. So fairly easy. Same thing, generate, but you pass an extra uh, object here, an, an, an anonymous in our class. So here, I just used a simple uh, question-answer scenario, but of course, you can implement a chat. So how would you do that? So I'm still using the same model. So, well, I'm using Pro this time, why not? Pro or Flash. Uh, but I'm going to use a message window chat memory because I want to keep the latest messages of the conversation, but only the 20 latest ones. I don't necessarily want to have a big context window that I keep passing you know, back and forth between uh, my code and uh, the server, basically. And the other thing we're going to do is to define our own interface. That'll be the interface we use to interact with, uh, the, the, let's say, the, the Java interface we use to interact with the LLM. But as you can see, 
Uh, I mean, it's just our own interface, and there's no trace of long chain 4G. So when you integrate that in a Java application, you only have your own um, interfaces, basically, right? So it's not, let's say, polluted by um, the infrastructure code that uh, long chain 4G uh, adds. And uh, we are going to use this concept of AI services. So in long chain 4G, AI services are a way to bind different things together. So here, uh, I'm going to use, so I'm going to implement or let long chain 4G implement that interface for me. I'm going to say, okay, I want to use the Gemini model, and I want to use this chat memory. The chat memory is also useful to keep track of who's talking with the model. So if you, ha if you have several uh, users in parallel, there's a conversation for each user, obviously, because you don't want to mix the conversations between the different users. And then I'm going to ask uh, different questions, one after the other. So I'm going to say conversation.chat. Conversation that's the, uh, the signature that I define myself. Uh, maybe do something different, like where the Atomium is situated, right? So let's run that. Gradle, Gradle, and then hello, how can I help you? What is the, can well, it goes too fast. What is the country where the Atomium is situated? Okay, it's in Belgium and uh, uh, in Brussels. And how many habitants are there in that country, Belgium? Is it correct? 11.6 million? Yeah, more or less? Okay, good. So, um, you know, I asked questions like how many inhabitants in that country, but I didn't mention which country. So it really keeps track of that context of the conversation. Because at first we only spoke about the atomium, so it really derives uh, the understanding the, the knowledge of, of the, the actual context. The atomium is in Belgium. Belgium has that many inhabitants. Okay, so that's a chat. We can do a multimodal. Uh, so we were using um, just strings when we were asking questions, but you can also create user messages. So same thing as usual, I define my model. But this time, instead of passing just a string, I'm going to say, okay, I pass an image and I pass a text content. Describe the picture. So maybe I can copy and paste that potentially if you want to see what uh, this thing looks like. Uh, okay, so this is this guy. Okay, so let's run this example and let's see what it suggests it is. Griddle, 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 and then. Ah, too fast. A tabby cat is walking on snow, light brown and black striped cat, etc. So that's how you can pass images, uh, text together uh, in one single uh, query. Next thing you might have heard about um, few shot prompting. Few shot prompting is a, is a technique uh, to help um, a model answer more to your liking. Um, and think more like you want it to, to think. So, for example, I want to create a, a simple sentiment analysis prompt. So, there's a, and it's also an excuse to introduce you to prompt template. It's a way to create a template with some placeholder values that are going to be uh, changed when we uh, send that to the LLM. So, same thing, I have a model here. I'm preparing a template. But you can see, okay, analyze the sentiment of the text and reply with, so for example, this is fantastic news, it's positive, uh, pi is 3.14, it's neutral, I just like pizza, it's negative, etc. So for example, I love uh, Belgian waffles. Ah, waffles. And let's run that. If it says it's negative, I, I'd be surprised. But it's a way to force the model uh, to follow a certain step, uh, for, for a certain you know, formatting. So you could also, uh, I'm, I'm not doing that here, but in the next, uh, I'll show you that. You can also force it to return JSON, for example, which is actually the next thing. Oh yeah, and I didn't, uh, so I have the prompt template. Then uh, I, apply some uh, variable exchanges, basically. I replace the text here with uh, the actual text I want to pass in that template. And then I can create the user message out of the prompt 
and pass that to the, the generate method. The other interesting thing I wanted to mention was data extraction. So this time we're going to force the model to return JSON. So uh, this time I'm using uh, AI services again here to create a person extractor. So I'm going to pass um, some text. So I've got a little biography. Anna is 23 years old. And uh, I want Longchain4j to actually implement that person extractor here interface. But notice that I enriched this interface with a special user message. So I'm going to say, yeah, please. So the, the biography is coming from this uh, variable. And I'm going to say, yeah, please extract a JSON document about the name, the age uh, of the person described in the biography, return JSON. And then I'm kind of forcing it to say, hey, uh, please put JSON here. So that's what I'm going to run this. And, yeah, and the, the, the last thing I wanted to mention about that is that you should return a person. So not just a string, but it's going to do the marshal, marshalling and marshalling out automatically from the JSON that is returned so that it maps to my record person uh, object. So it should return person an object, and then I can call .name and .age on the uh, actual um, record that is returned. So what's great, again, in terms of Java integration, it's that you can, uh, so yeah, it's just, I'm just printing text, but it really returns a record uh, that contains the information extracted uh, from, the, um, from the text. So uh, you, as a Java developer, uh, there may be some developers working on the LLM integration aspects, but you, you only manipulate an interface, a method, and that returns a person record. Uh, it's something that I really like. Uh, I'd like to show, show you RAG as well. Retrieval augmented generation. And I've got, uh, yeah, don't have that much time, so I'll explain. Oops. What do I do? OK. Uh, slideshow. So retrieval augmented generation, it's a technique to, uh, which works in two phases. So you have some documents you want to search information from some particular documents, your own documents, private company information, etc. stuff that's not part of the language model's own knowledge. So you're going to take documents, split them in small chunks, and for each of those chunks, you're going to create vector embeddings. That's a vector representation, a semantic meaning encoded into vectors of numbers. And you're going to store those vectors inside a vector database. And what's important with that is Vectors that are similar, that are close to each other, bear the same semantic meaning. So after ingestion, I'm going to do the querying part, the inference part. In my chatbot application, I may ask a question, and it's going to calculate a vector embedding for that question. And we are going to compare the vector representation of that query with the data that is stored into the, inside the vector database. And it will find the vectors that are closest to the query vector. And the snippets of the documentation that are returned by the vector database are semantically linked to that query. And then you're going to ask the LLM to uh, create a reply out of the, the context. Uh, OK, you're an expert in that particular topic. Here's uh, some extracts. Here are some extracts re uh, of relevant information to help you create an answer. Here's the question that was asked. Please respond to, to that answer. And then you give the answer back to, to, the, to, the, uh, to the user. So I have um, like this demo there. Um, I, I created a chatbot for the Apache Groovy documentation. So for example, can I implement, we mentioned records. Can I implement records uh, like in Java? Let's see. I'm going to ask that question. And it's going to search for records, Java, in the Apache Groovy documentation. And yeah, you can create records. And um, so here's an example of a record, etc. And maybe I can ask, uh, create um, a record for a conference schedule, um, create, uh, give a, uh, an example with Vox days 
uh, Brussels. Or use, well, let's see if it, it's a bit broken English, but let's see. And uh, hopefully it should create a record. Uh, accordingly, okay, record, session, Voxdes Brussels schedule. Not sure the date is accurate, but that's fine. It's just a, an example. And some example sessions, etc. So I implemented retrieval augmented generation. So either so I'm going to show you. So I've got the the actual uh, application there, but I'll show you uh, maybe this template. So you're an expert in the GUI programming language. Um, here's the question that was asked, and base your answer exclusively on the following information from the Groovy documentation. And there, the snippets of documentation are going to be injected into that prompt. But I'll show you a slightly uh, simpler example here to show you how to do the two phases, because there are two phases. First, um, we need an embedding model to create vectors from the text. We're going to use an in-memory vector database for simplicity. And then we are going to split the documentation in small chunks. So here I split by 500 characters with an overlay of uh, 100 characters. I've got several chunks. And we're going to ingest that documentation. So it means parsing the whole documentation, splitting in chunks, and creating those big vectors of numbers. And then OK, that's here. So that was the first phase. Then the second phase is going to be the, the querying part. So how to do that? Uh, I need a retriever. Uh, it will tell Longchain4j, OK, you have to search for the information inside that vector database. And as usual, I also need a, a, a model to chat with. And then this is the, the key part where you bind everything together. OK, so you're an LLM expert. Use that language model. Use a chat memory for the discussion with the different users. And then, so you don't necessarily have to write that part, but I wanted to show you how you can uh, create your own custom prompts. Uh, but otherwise, there's a default prompt that uh, does the same thing. So you're an expert in a certain topic. Here's the question, and here's the contents fetched from the vector database. And then I ju it's just a, a chat interface. And uh, so there was a, an interface somewhere interface, LLM expert, string, ask, ask the question. And everything is done for you under the hood by longchain 4 j All right, uh, so we've got a few minutes left. I I'd like to show you another thing that I find very interesting, that's function calling. So function calling, it's a way to extend a large language model with um, things it doesn't know. That's not part of its training. That's not part of its knowledge. So, for example, let's say I want to know the weather in uh, a certain city. Of course, a large language model doesn't know about the weather. But instead, you're going to tell uh, the Gemini, in this case, you're going to, to tell the, the LLM that, OK, the user asked me for a particular question. But if you don't know, maybe you can use a function uh, to help you with finding the relevant information for that particular query. And so you send the question plus a description of the function that are available. And the model will say, oh, yeah, maybe uh, you can call that method get weather with uh, Brussels or whichever city. Call it for me. And then you, as a Java developer using Longchain4j, you're going to say, OK, here's, uh, I'm going to call that external weather service. I fetch the result, and then I'm going to feed the result of this API back to the LLM. And then the LLM is going to be able to say, OK, it's sunny in Krakow. The, I was in Krakow last week. So let's see that in action. Uh, here, no, that's the other one. That's this example. So you can see, again, a chat model. What's new here is that I have this. Uh, so here I'm doing, I'm wiring things manually, but I'll show you a, a more advanced example. Uh, this is a, a tool that you can use. So I describe the tool with information so that the LLMs figures out what this uh, thing is doing. And then uh, back and forth, what's the weather, let's say, in Brussels? I might need to uh, update this. So I'll change that. So here I, I feed. Um, the, uh, the response directly. I'm not calling a real weather service. So I cheat a little bit. 
But then, uh, if I run that, so it should say, if I changed all the uh, occurrences, so what's the weather in Brussels? Okay, the weather in Brussels is sunny with a temperature of 20 degrees. So you help the LLM with stuff that it doesn't know about, or you could also have functions that uh, create tickets in, in Jira, um, uh, call your home assistant to open the window blinds, etc. So you can really create agents that are able to act on your behalf. Uh, and I have some more advanced examples, for example, here. Um, so this one is going to show you uh, another approach. I wired everything together, but Longchain4j does things with AI services, which is uh, nicer. So for example, I can annotate uh, a class with a tool annotation and also potentially with parameter descriptions so that Longchain4j does the call itself to the local Java code, which may be calling a weather service, etc. And then things, and the weather service interface looks like this, just strings. And the, the new thing, the extra new thing, is you pass the tools and I pass the weather forecast service. And uh, if I run that example again, uh, did I add like Krakow or Brussels maybe? Brussels. No, it's sunny. You really want rainy? Come on. Rainy, uh, cold, I don't know. Uh, Brussels. And, uh, uh, and uh, you'll see two questions, which I want to uh, explain a little bit. So I'm all, mm, a little bit over time, but I'll show you one last example. Oh, I don't have weather information. What? Uh, maybe I did a mistake, I guess. Uh, uh, but I had two questions. So Brussels. I have Brussels in. What's the weather in Brussels? This is correct, right? Um, rainy. It's equals to Brussels. Oh, yeah. Nobody tells me about my mistake. Come on. Help me. You're, you're my AI, my human <laughs> assistant. <clears throat> okay, so the weather, Brussels, is rainy, etc. But the other thing, the other question is interesting because it shows another advanced aspect of function calling, which is the ability to do parallel functions calling. Because here, I asked, is the, wa is the weather warmer in London or in Paris? So it has to do, OK, get the weather in London, get the weather in Paris, compare the two, and reply. And here, with parallel function calling, it's able to say, oh yeah, I'm going to do the, those two calls, and then I'm going to reply with, well, uh, OK, uh, it's uh, warmer uh, in that particular city. OK, the last example I want to show you before finishing, and I'm uh, the sole thing that prevents you from eating now, so here, that's Gemma. I want to show you how to, to run Gemma locally on your machine. So again, I'm going to create a, a chatbot application using Longchain4j, and I'm going to run the Gemma open model locally on my machine. And how am I going to do that? I'm going to run Gemma inside Olama. Olama is a tool that you can install on your machine to run open models. And instead of installing the software uh, on my machine, I decided to use uh, test, test containers, which provides an Olama test container. So I'm running Gemma within Olama, which runs in a Docker container inside test containers. Okay, and uh, well, it's uh, it's actually pretty pretty transparent, as you will see. Uh, no, that's the other window. This one, Gemma. So here, um, so I'm creating the container. If it doesn't exist, because I have it already. Here, uh, this is Docker Desktop. I have it already downloaded, but in case it's going to create the container. Uh, and uh, otherwise, if it, uh, is it this one? Yeah, otherwise, if it exists, I just going to, I'm just going to use the, the container that is already in my uh, Docker Desktop application. And then I'm going to use uh, an Olama chat model, which points at the host of the, the container, the Olama container from test container. And then, OK, I'm going to say, you're an expert at SQL. I'm going to pass a SQL schema, et cetera. And I'm going to ask a question, like, how many marine protected areas are there in the Pacific Ocean? And then, so you'll see lots of warnings. That's test containers doing its stuff. And uh, maybe I should show you. 
So you see it's uh, small, but uh, the, the container is in use. TC, Olama, Gemma to be in use. We are currently using the container. So there are lots of warnings, but it should say, okay, if you want to do a SQL query, you can do, okay, count from uh, the table, blah, 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 where ocean equals Pacific. So it's good at SQL, even a small model like this. So it just works out of the box. All right, so that's about it. Um, let's uh, conclude with that. So Jim, Gemini and Gemma are pretty powerful models that you can use uh, today. And uh, well, I invite you to uh, play with this and I'd like to share you a few links, uh, in particular those two links there, the second and the third, which gives you access to the workshop. That's the instructions if you want to go through all the examples I showed today. Uh, so that's the, the code lab with, with all the steps. And the second link is the code in a GitHub repository if you want to play with that code. So I know I'm over. Uh, if you have questions, feel free to ask uh, right away, or you can ask uh, over lunch, uh, etc. Thanks a lot for your attention. <laughs> and any question, feel free to ask before heading to lunch. <laughs>